Hello, my name is uh, John Tepley, and uh, today I uh, have uh, ha had the great honor to be uh, talking with, uh, with uh, Katia Kite. And uh, she's a uh, Lincoln City, uh, Oregon uh, artist. Uh, she uh, originally started out in, uh, in Siberia, in, in Russia, Siberia, and, uh, and immigrated to the United States. And uh, we were very fortunate to have her end up on the, uh, on the Oregon coast. Um, uh, she, uh, she's mostly self-taught though, though she's had some, uh, some excellent people, uh, uh, during workshops and different classes, uh, work with her. Uh, she's represented by, uh, many galleries, um, uh, in, in Salem, uh, uh, at the, on the edge, uh, gallery, um, uh, the, the River Sea Gallery in Astorias and, and in Cloverdale. The, uh, the Shrine Gallery, as well as uh, in, uh, in Lincoln City. So, how are you doing today, Katya? I am doing good, enjoying our rain, rain and rainy weather asks for creating in the studio. Yes, and yes, I, nice. I did get to paint today, so. Um, well, that's interesting, you know, because I, you know, I, uh, I spent some time on the coast and, and in fact, there was this one period of like two weeks where I painted every day, right? And in that two weeks, I never got a sunny day. <laughs> and I was looking at some of your paintings and it seems like you actually have a lot of sunny days. Um, so is, is that something that... Um, that that you bring to it because you're looking for a certain kind of mood, or uh, do you mostly paint when the, when the weather is is pretty nice? I I was like you. I did uh, go and painted when it was raining or stormy. I thought it's going to give a certain energy to the painting, but when I got a little bit wiser but it's not true. So I got interested really in a uh, light and shadow pattern. And so I was actually looking for sunny days, but what happens with those sunny days, like you said, sometimes, you know, like right now it's a period of rain and we don't get any. So I have for those days, I have some photos that I took and I use photographs, but of course it is totally different experience when I work in a studio from a photograph than when I go outside. So when I go outside and find um, a location that inspires me, or sometimes I don't even uh, go for inspiration. I just go and just, you know, my goal is to sure. capture the essence and the mood and it, because it's always different. So I can find inspiration, I guess, in any weather when I go outside. But so what, I, what, 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 what is like, the difference in inspiration between working outside and in your studio, like what the working outside is absolutely. It, it is um, so it's when you go to the source. So nature is right there. You get inspired. You see the colors. With your eyes, you can see the nuances of a color that you want capture in a photograph. And so, as an artist, you see something that um, you can capture. Like it's, for me, it, it, it is not the same. So it's totally different experience. And in a studio, it is more about design, the composition. I can think about maybe certain color combinations I want to um, try or I want to experiment. So it is a, a totally different experience for me. And I do enjoy more painting and plein air just because uh, I connect more, I guess I connect to the, um, to the environment more. I learn so much from nature and it, it is amazing. It's an amazing experience. I would call it a spiritual experience for myself. Interesting. Um, so often your, uh, your paintings have like very bold kinds of shapes and colors. Uh, can you uh, talk about um, uh, your uh, de decision making when, um, uh, when when you're painting. 
I like um, I like simplifying. So I think simplification or simplifying is very very difficult. So in in painting, sometimes we go into details and we don't really simplify. So it happens so often, and to find those simple shapes in nature, just simple shapes like a, you know shape of a tree and shape of a shadow, shape of a light, or shape of the uh, background um, mountains that are not too complicated, that are not going to take away from what I want to capture from my center of interest. It is quite, quite challenging. And so I need to practice to simplify. And um, blocking in, I call it, when you just take, for instance, 10 shapes, and you block them in from the beginning, you can see if the composition is going to work. Sure. And so if they are not working together, then it's not going to work. So the painting is not going to work no matter how much detail I'm going to add. So in your paintings, it seems like, uh, like form is very important, color is very important but also atmosphere. There's, it seems like you're trying to uh, capture the quality of the air of, uh, of the landscape. Correct. I started doing it just recently. I think oftentimes in the painting, I disregarded it. I wanted to capture literally what I saw in front of me. And sometimes it, I lost the atmosphere. I lost the distance. And now I am... Um, trying to capture it. I know that I need to be clearer. So I need to exaggerate how much further one shape. So like one shape is in front is going to be, for instance, um, darker than the shape behind. So that creates some distance and atmosphere. So I'm doing it intentionally. And that's what um, lately I've been really interested in that and trying to capture because sometimes when when it, we see like okay so I see that that is the exact color but then it's behind and it just you know it can kill the distance and um the painting so as, a, as an artist I need to make decisions and I need to make some changes that will work in my painting the uh, the painting that we see behind you is a is a beautiful painting it's um it's one that you uh, painted for the Seventh Generation Project uh, last year, and uh, uh, we were so happy to uh, exhibit it. And, and I think much of what you're talking about that uh, you can see in that painting, you know, like you have the, uh, the, the bold forms uh, that are uh, uh, closer to us. And then, then as, as, as we get back, you still have the forms, but they, uh, but the intensity seems to uh, the uh, to diminish a bit. Um, uh, can you uh, can you talk about your process? Mm -hmm. um, in a studio or on plein air? Uh, uh, is it different? Well, so in a studio, for instance, this is a large painting. So we're talking two by four feet, and my paintings on plein air are small. So when I go and paint in oh. plein air, they're tiny. So we're talking about like, for instance, sometimes it's as small as five by seven. So I call them a baby pa baby painting. And so I can capture very quickly the conditions of the environment, right? In, in about an hour and a half, sure, for instance. Sure. And sometimes, you know, I, I try to go a little faster because then you just, you capture the moment. And so in a larger panel, I need to know the composition. I need to know that it's going to work. And so, um, here, and it's a different format. So it starts maybe with sketches first, and I can make some sketches uh, with color. With this particular panel, I had a composition in mind and I had colors in mind, but when I started working on it, it took a life of its own and it went into you know exaggerated color, very moody atmosphere. So it was kind of, I was having fun, you know, just kind of like my um, imagination turned on too. And it was really interesting to, you know, let it happen because it sure. is, it is definitely, it, it is fun, you know, just kind of like, oh, I'm playful, you know, I, I can play here <laughs> on a bigger format. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, you know, um, you know, as you, uh, you told me how, how, how large your paint, I didn't realize that your normal way of working was uh, much smaller. So, so, so 
when we approached you and 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 said it was a two foot by four foot, you you probably thought we were crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> my, I have a studio in the garage. Well, which is so I park my car. I have my dryer and washer in the garage. So and they have small space, you know. And I was thinking, okay, I need to move my car out to accommodate this panel. How am I going to do that? So I figured it out. I will put it on a wall. I saw some artists did it. So I didn't have to have a special easel for it. So it's not going to, you know, like I, I cannot have a big easel just because of the space limitation. And I put the panel on the wall. And so I was painting on the wall. It was pretty, yeah. It, it was definitely, it was like, oh yeah, it's a great challenge. I liked it. <laughs> really inspirational. Yeah. So I, uh... So, so I, I see in your work where um, you are interested in the color of objects, and you are interested in in uh, in people recognizing uh, objects. Like I like I recognize that uh, that that's a rock form with a tree on it, um, uh, or a or a flower. Uh, uh, for, for uh, those of you who don't know Katya's work, uh, she uh, she has a, a beautiful series of flowers that she does. Um, uh, but it seems like with landscapes, you're more experimental with the color than with other subject matters. Uh, is that is that fair to say? I think I, I think you're right. I started <laughs> doing it recently because I noticed. Um, for instance, this Celeste Bay, the painting behind me, I painted numerous times. And when I put all these paintings together in one file, I looked how much they, they, they were so similar. Like many of them were, you know, I chose the same colors of the rocks. I was very attached to the to what I saw in front of me. So, and I decided that I'm, I need to step out of it and start experimenting with different color combinations, just trying to design not, so it, it will be still, I will be still attached, not attached, <laughs> inspired by the uh, scene in front of me, but I wanted to step away and be different every time I paint. So I didn't want to, because you know I painted it several times and chose the same color. So it was like, okay, so the challenge here is to try to find different solutions. And it became much more interesting for me as an artist. I think I grew out of it. I, 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 grew, I grew as an artist because of it. Now, do you look at traditional, like say, color wheels, or is it more intuitive as you're uh, as you're painting? I do both. I do look. Um, sometimes I even look at other artists' paintings and see how they solved, for instance, some some things. Like what the, what what they did in their paintings. Um, artists that I love, um, and the color wheel. I do have a color wheel that I got from um, from one of the artists I took a workshop from. So it's not a traditional one. It has more complementary colors, but you can choose a range of colors that you wouldn't think of. And ah. so that definitely inspires me to, for instance, instead of purple, you know, you can add maybe um, turquoise and, and see how, how that will change the feels. That is so interesting. It's just, you know, to step out of my normal, or regular pattern because we can get into the habit of using the same colors and forget that we need to um, let our creativity flow and just constantly trying to find something new inside. You know, what I, what I find really interesting uh, looking at your landscapes is, um, is, you know, you're interested in forms, you're interested in color, you're interested in atmosphere, but often it seems like space is important. Like you want us to realize that um, uh, that there's, you know, that 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 we're looking over many miles, or you know, there's a, there's like a perspective, um, uh, which doesn't necessarily, which isn't necessarily important for you know for paintings that are strong on form. Um, could you talk about that a little bit? Um, um, I do want to create a reality that is, you know, that shows shows how, for instance, the ocean is just, it is vast and amazingly, it just, 
the universe, you know? And so when I paint it, I definitely want to capture it and, and create the space that is that vast and broad in a small painting. And, and so um, maybe that, you know, I, I was, I was focused on the form before maybe, maybe so it's kind of like a layers of how I'm learning myself because I'm a student of life and I'm learning how, and maybe it just kind of comes as it goes. And so um, it's, it's interesting you notice that I'm interested in, in the form, which um, I, I guess I just, you know, capture it. I, I definitely, for me, you know, I thought it was color and the uh, space, but it is really, all of it, I guess, you know, so just kind of trying to incorporate it in the painting. And that's the challenge. <laughs> right? You get all <laughs> like, okay, that's a lot of things, you know, so it's kind of nice sometimes to focus on just one and step away from the form. So maybe at some point I can do that. <laughs> so there, there's certain intangibles, you know, of, uh, of, of life. I mean, there's uh, emotions, uh, 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 love, spirituality. How how important is that in your painting, and is that something that uh, that you can do with painting? Actually, is is address uh, those kinds of uh, subjects? It takes a lot of mastery. <laughs> it takes a lot of skills. So it just you know, on top of. Um, for instance, we learn about composition, we learn about color, and we learn about the form. And the next one is to express our feeling, right? So our, how we feel about that. And, and so it takes so, much, so many skills to connect it all, and it's magic. And sometimes some paintings happen, um, and I think the more experience they get, and the more skills I get, I, I catch tiny glimpses of what, how I felt at the moment and I, I catch those glimpses and hopefully hopefully it will happen more often um, but but it, it you know it also just what, what I think it should look like right so sometimes you need to let go like completely let yourself let it go and just forget about all the rules you learned about all the you know trainings you did um, take and just let yourself play and I think that's when it happens so then, then when, when we let ourselves play, then spirituality, um, our emotions, our humanity will come forth, which is amazing. And I sometimes see when artists, you know, artists that I admire have that, that just takes my breath away. And I, I think it's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It is amazing. So, you know, uh, the, the project it's called for the seventh generation and and it's about uh, being in solidarity with uh, future generations and um, uh, you know and looking at uh, you know this beautiful planet that we've received and and realizing uh, uh, we're just borrowing it actually and there's others that uh, uh, that you know that we're going to and need to give it to um, oh what? What are your uh, what what are your thoughts on on that? I I have a seven year old, <laughs> so I definitely think about it a lot, and um, I do I do I do want to how how they say leave no trace right so leave in no trace, okay, how can I do that myself in such a way? How can I gently use it? You know how can I learn from um, Indian Americans, um, how how they can live in harmony with nature, and how we can um, use it in such a way that it's going to be a gentle use, you know, just not abusing, but gently in in harmony with nature. How can we can we can it can it be done? You know, can we coexist in that harmony? That's the question. But I definitely think about about it. And I think this project, you know, capturing the uh, shoreline and also 
taking pictures and saving that, it will show how it changes as well. So we know it, it's not always the same. And the rocks behind me, I saw when it was taken years and years ago, it was totally different. You know, the tree was so tiny. It was just kind of different from what I, I know, how I know it. I think what we're doing and you're doing is an amazing project to try to capture this that moment in time so then they can see and like wow look at that nice well we've been talking with uh with katia kite um do you uh well we're winding down now is there anything that you would like to say that we haven't covered i am looking forward to everyone who is interested in the project and meeting um, other artists. So much amazing work. I really enjoyed that. And yeah, thank you for the honor and thank you for you inviting me too. I'm really honored to be a part of it. You're very welcome. Well, we've been talking with uh, Katia Kite, uh, a, who uh, you can see, uh, you can see the painting. Well, it's actually in a gallery right now, so it may be sold, but you'll be doing another one if this one sells. Uh, but she will be in the exhibition. It, it's at the uh, Lincoln City Cultural Center, uh, July uh, 13th through the 16th. And, uh, uh, and, I, and I hope uh, that the audience can come, uh, come join us. Thank you, uh, Katya. Thanks, John. Thank you. Well, uh, bye for now. And, uh, uh, and we hope to see uh, everybody later. Bye-bye.